Another striker who is in the headlines and not really for any good reasons, um, Aaron Connolly has come off social media due to the due to the abuse he got from uh, missing the chance against Spurs the other night. Um, it seems as though he's out there deleting his accounts for his Instagram, Twitter, and so on. Um, a lot of the abuse seems to be gamblers who obviously had uh, probably bright this to win two 0 or whatever it was. And he obviously missed the chance, which, in my opinion, um, we had this out on the WhatsApp group. I know Jay was saying that uh, he should have scored, but I felt that it was an unbelievable block by Toby Alderweireld. And um, I just think it's a bit unfortunate. 2-0 Rashford just scored, as I say it. But, uh, Gary, what do you think about that? It seems a bit extreme to be giving him abuse over missing a chance. like. Oh, oh it's disgraceful. Absolutely, Paul. And... Uh... Yeah, I think the speculation was it was gamblers. Now, I don't know, um, just as I, oh, I think it's offside, Palace scored again, which was offside. Sorry, I'll start again. Yeah, I, I, I think it's it, it's disgraceful that, that he got the abuse. I, I, I hate to see any player get abuse, not to mind one of our own Irish players, and particularly one like Aaron Connolly who's playing so well. Yeah, look, he probably should have scored, but as you said, it was absolutely superb defending and a brilliant block by Toby Alderweireld. Um, Brighton still won the match and uh, frankly anyone betting on Brighton to beat Tottenham by two goals I, I don't know I know they nearly did it but I don't know where they're um, I would use the phrase a fool in his money but I actually fully expected Tottenham to win that game but then what do I know as well but um, yeah look whatever about that I really hate to see a young player and a talented young player who's got a great future in the game getting abuse like that and uh, look absolutely full support for Aaron Connolly I'm sure he's going to come back come back from this and uh, we're talking about Stephen's squad for March I mean Aaron's going if Aaron is fit he's in Stephen's first starting 11 for March without a shadow of a doubt uh, he's probably our most informed uh, attack minded player and uh, I, I just hope he's okay and probably better off off social media, I think probably most young players these days, sadly, would be better off being off social media because it's just one mistake or one one bad miss, one one goal given away, and suddenly you're the target of abuse, etc. And uh, it's particularly sickening when it's one of our own. So, um, Aaron, you've got our, our full support. And uh, I know he's a firm, firm favourite of the Irish fans and of the Brighton fans. Yeah, Paul, have you entered the touch on with that, or did you see the abuse he, he suffered? Yeah, I've seen it myself. It's it's pretty bad. I think you got to give, if anything, from that situation, you got to give all the viral credit for clearing it. It's an unbelievable clearance, like you said. But uh, yeah, no, that that's just shouldn't be going on. Obviously, gamblers, as Gary said, I don't know who's back in Brighton to win two 0 Brighton to score a goal would be a better bet. Never mind Brighton to win two 0 But um. Yeah, terrible. And as Gary said as well, he's better off off social media. I think most footballers are, to be honest. All it is is abuse. All they get is abuse the majority of the time, particularly on Twitter. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we're we're in full support of Aaron and it's disgraceful what went on. I'll just give yeah. you another cra crazy stat on Brighton's wins. Brighton's last home win, obviously, was against Tottenham in 2021. Their last Premier League home win before that was in 2020, and their last Premier League win before that was in 2019. So people putting their money, obviously they did win, so maybe I'm the fool on this, but people putting their money on a Brighton 2 it'll win. I don't know. Mm, yeah, crazy. One of those wins was against Arsenal as well, so they like playing against the North London sides at the Amex, obviously. And they, um, and they also had the, the, the win over Tottenham in 2019. I think they did win at home <laughs> after that. But that was the one that Aaron got the two goals and burst on the scene. And... Mm, did he yeah. burst on the scene? Good <laughs> <laughs> free um, kick there by, uh, by James Ward-Prowse and good save by De Gea. Uh, I would have expected Ward-Prowse to score from there considering the form he's been in this season. But... Uh, Still 2 0 here at Old Trafford. But um, yeah, just just on Aaron there, I think the club came out in support to, uh, to you know reach out to him to see if he's okay, which is, I think is proper order anyway. They should be doing that regardless. But uh, <clears throat> I think Aaron, Aaron's a big boy from, from speaking to him before and stuff like that. Like um, He's well able to handle himself for abuse and he seems to kind of give it back to trolls sometimes. 
but I think maybe this time it just got too far. And uh, I think if a couple of people are in the comments there are saying that, you know, I have a, a couple of comments there that I just want to read out from people. So I just want to change the layout there for a sec. Uh, so Black Church and Reggae says something needs to be done about the online abuse that players get. It's unacceptable that they can get away with it. And especially the racial stuff is disgusting. And um, someone else had said it above. I, I'm after losing it, am I? Um, bu, 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 uh, no, David Walsh says it. And David Walsh also says hit the unlike button. Dave, I won't be reading out any more of your comments if you any more of that carry on, okay? Um, no, he says, uh, Alder Oirel probably owed Connolly that after he done him last season, which is true. And he says, in all serious though, no place for abuse in the game. It kind of all kind of stems down to, you know, uh, this thing where, where a lot of people are calling on the likes of Instagram and Twitter to verify accounts like they do with, with like Revolut and stuff like that. So people actually have to answer for for themselves or say if someone's on their account or something like that well that's you shouldn't have let someone onto your account now if you get hacked you get hacked i understand that but people need to be a lot more careful with what they're saying and some of the stuff that you see like aaron Connolly's not the first irish player to come off social media shane duffy's off it as well you know from the abuse he's been getting off celtic fans and stuff like that and probably rangers fans too um and then you, you shane long had to come off it and when shane long actually came off it his form improved so maybe it's not, not necessarily a bad thing that he's off, as you said, but the, the whole abuse, the racial abuse, obviously Jonathan Afalabi got racially abused and stuff like that. It's, it's, it has to stop. And, you know, surely, I was listening to a podcast yesterday, uh, which was funny enough, where I heard Patrick Bamford said he basically wanted to play for England. Um, but they spoke about the, the racial abuse. They spoke about people having to get their accounts verified but i'm just wondering why some social media presence doesn't come out and make a platform where you basically have to verify yourself and if instagram and twitter aren't going to do it then maybe there's another platform or boycott them i'm not saying it's going to happen but it's an idea like because they don't ever seem to be held accountable for what they're saying or what they're doing and it's clear excuse me it's clearly affecting people do you know what i mean you know, people shouldn't have to have to witness that, especially, you know, players after they, you know, I know Jonathan Afalabi suffered it after he scored a goal, and apparently that was someone who lost a bet or something in Turkey. I don't, I don't, I don't care. He should be arrested. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, it's, sorry, go on, Gary, go on. Sorry, Paul. Yeah, no, all I was going to say, I definitely agree with that social media that you should be forced to prove some kind of identification. I think the companies don't like to do it because they'd lo lose a lot of accounts. And you also have the situation where um, certain people or certain organizations have hundreds of accounts and uh, it would be no harm in, in getting rid of them as well. Um, but yeah, it's the abuse is getting ridiculous on social media. Um, whatever time, type of it is, whether it's racial abuse or anything like that, it, it's all disgusting. And uh, hate to, really hate to see it. And uh, I, I think the social media companies have a lot to answer for and need to take uh, responsibility or need to be made take responsibility by the governments in, in this case. Yeah, Paul, you were going to say something there. You kind of cross wires with Gary. So what were you going to say? Yeah, I was just going to say pretty much the same thing. It's like uh, the companies have a lot to be... Uh, a lot to look out for. Uh, it's terrible that it's even going on, that we're still even talking about it in 2021. And uh, yeah, the verifying thing, that's a great idea. If we have to do it for Revolut, why don't we have to do it for Twitter? So yeah, I'm all for that. Yeah, but the thing, like, everybody knows I don't like Twitter accounts, especially the faceless ones. I mean, it's so easy for them to have an opinion and then, you know, not be able to back it up or, you know, cowardly opinions where they say something but hide behind an account of a, of a profile picture of a footballer or something like that there's loads of them um i really don't enjoy them because they act like they're nice to a woman and when they want them they they can just make you look like a bad person and stuff like that and i find there's a lot of those accounts on twitter especially i find instagram's not so much as bad but it's a bit more of a friendlier place but i i just really don't like twitter if i could come off i would but obviously if they use it for keeping people updated and stuff like that. But honestly, I'll just log on to it. Uh, own goal there, 3-1, or 3-0, uh, to Man United, Bednarek with an OG. Um, 
33 minutes played but yeah i did i just i look at instagram and and twitter if i wasn't uh part of the channel putting out news and stuff like that i wouldn't be on it i wouldn't be on twitter sorry at all i just think it's a cesspit of negativity and i think more so because of covid now i think there's more people online than ever and they've nowhere to vent their frustration or their anger except for online you know gary yeah it's uh what can, what can we say to it? I know. And uh, I, I see someone in the comments is even mentioning that it was an Irish person uh, that, that abused Ian Wright. Yeah, mm. uh, I thought he was up in court, actually, a guy from Kerry. And he racially abused Ian Wright because he, he played Ian Wright in FIFA and uh, he didn't perform as well and he lost some mate of his. So he goes on social media and actually racially abuses Ian Wright. I don't know. Is just so sick, and uh, I just hope the law is thrown at him, and I just hope it can just encourage, um, I don't know, more, just to get it stopped or encourage governments to clamp down on the uh, on the social media. And I know there were mad facts, I know I'm a bit on some mad facts tonight. This is one that really kind of scared me a little bit because I well remember Ian Wright's playing days. Ian Wright's grandson is now a professional footballer. I didn't say son, obviously, grandson. So I'm definitely feeling a little bit old tonight. <laughs> Mad. That even makes me feel feel old with the two lads who played before him as well, Bradley and Sean. And they and I think they're still playing. Oh, sorry, they're, they're retired now, aren't they? Sean think, is anyway. I think Bradley's still playing in America for someone anyway. He he's he they love him over in the MLS. He's one of the all time top goal scorers over there. Yeah, he uh, he was playing with the New York Red Bulls and was loved over there. It's funny because he wasn't that good in, in England at all when he when he went over. But yeah, as you say, Gary, yeah, uh, there's no place for it. It's just just mindless idiots. It's the same people who probably abused James McLean and then you know will will, will turn around and, and give say Ian Wright stick and stuff like that. It's just and he's after getting more abuse as well there the other day as well. I don't know if you saw, he, he shared a, a letter of someone sending him a, a letter basically about the, I think it was the 49th anniversary of the the men in Derry that were killed. Oh, bloody Sunday. Yeah, I, I saw here James's wife shared a, a letter that they, they got got abuse as well yeah it's um i think james is off social media is he or maybe i can't sorry i'm, I'm losing track on this but yeah look it, it's terrible to see james getting abused it's terrible to see shane duffy's getting a lot of abuse at the moment and shane duffy made the scottish premier league team of the month for january so um he can't have been that bad when he's um okay he maybe a couple of high profile goals he was responsible for but uh, certainly what I've seen, he also played really, really well in games and his stats have been really good as well. So um, I, I think people need to, I don't know, and even, even if a player is playing badly, even if they're going through a bad time, you cannot abuse them. It's really disgraceful. And in particular, uh, abuse them because of the colour of their skin, of their nationality, their religion, whatever it is, it's just, um, it's just not on. And... Uh, it has to stop. And I think the social media companies need to take some of the responsibility here. And as we said, verify the accounts. Mm, it's just nasty, to be honest. But he, he did share uh, a... He has a picture uh, of a letter in his hand that not only did he get the, the email sent to him, that's what Aaron McLean had shared, but he also had a, a handwritten letter sent to him as well. And he just wrote... Uh, I'm not going to say what's in the letter, but it says uh, McLean's response was big brave shite bag writes a letter but no name or address no name or address sorry so hard so uh he shared that on his instagram story so yeah um a lot of the irish players getting abused at the moment and it's just not right and the thing is the english media won't do anything about it they'll just let it kind of slide with the irish players um and only up until really recently when the players started getting behind the movement, then they started getting behind all the, the, the racism stuff. I didn't think they really acted on that until the players started getting more involved. And now they're kind of making that a big deal. But they, they, I know that is an extremely you know, big deal at the moment. But I think they should be doing it with all forms, not just you know um, skin colour. I think they should be doing it as well with that. 
but I mean they're they're not going to listen to us, are they? Um, but it's just it's a it's an ongoing frustration I have. 